Hello guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me for another video and welcome if you're new here. I'm Alyssa and today's video is all about answering your questions that you sent in. I'm going to, I think, do the planty questions first and then the personal questions I think second just to split it up a little bit easier. I am going to be repotting and answering the questions. The repottings I will briefly explain what I'm doing but they're going to be mostly just kind of mindless repots so that I can focus on answering your questions. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for everyone who sent in their questions and I can't wait to get started. So I want to grab all of my supplies, the plants that I need, all of my soil and all of that and we will get to answering your questions. I'm gonna try to get through as many questions as you guys asked. My computer's right here and I have them all pulled up. The first little project I'll show you that I want to do, these are all my um, tissue culture plants here. I have the Syngonia milk confetti on this side and the variegated Gigantium on this side. These are the little plugs that I did and they really need an upsize. Look at that. So I'm gonna be taking these and potting them into their own little pots here. I have, I might have to go get more, we'll see. These are three inches and I have a couple more like smaller pots. Yeah, I might end up doing a couple into one container cause I don't want like a ton of these. <laughs> I don't want like 20 different like pots, you know, but we'll see how um, how they do here. Depending on how long this takes, I might end up doing like a couple more projects because again, I want to try and get through as many questions as I can. So I'm going to just start at the top here. First question I have is how long does it usually take for your plants to root into a moss pole? It depends on the plant and how long it takes to reestablish the root system first because it's going to take a bit of a hit when you first transfer it onto a pole. It has to grow new soil roots. And once it's happy, like down here in the base, it'll focus on pushing new leaves, new growth, and which with each new growth, you're gonna get nodes that grow and they'll start seeking that moisture from the moss that's wet and they'll start attaching into it as it climbs. So it could take, it could take a month, it could take longer, um, even a little less. It really, honestly, it just depends on the particular plant because I feel like, and it depends on if you do like a baby plant versus cuttings and what kind of cuttings those are. Are they mid cuts? That will take a while to, kind of reshoot a growth and then start climbing. So it really depends. But I would say average, I would give them a good like month or so at least to kind of like situate and then they will start growing and attaching. Oh, how cute. So this one is like two little ones. So I'm just gonna keep these how they are and then pop this one up. So stinking cute. <laughs> I love, I seriously love baby plants. So how did I first get into plants? It was during the COVID times, the pandemic. And you know, I was working as a bedside nurse and it was really stressful. And it was like end of 2019, beginning of 2020. I just needed a way to just, I don't know. I was looking at plants I remember in the hardware store. I can't really remember like the first plant I got or what really made me get into them. I just know that I got plants and I just love taking care of them and love learning about them. And then it just went on from there. I don't. I honestly like don't remember much of my early plant collecting times. I just know that I went crazy and just started getting any and everything. There was a Lowe's hardware store to like two miles from my our old house. And I was there every week looking at plants. 
and they had a pretty good selection of house plants. Then I joined a local plant group and on Facebook. I was joining plant purges and trying to buy cuttings and plant prices were pretty expensive when I first got into them, which now I just like, I can't believe some of the prices that I paid for a cutting and you can get the whole entire plant now for <laughs> so much less, I don't know. I, I do wish I had waited to buy some of those plants. I just felt like, you know, I had to have it now and I couldn't wait, you know, I just had to have it incidentally. <laughs> I don't regret it though, because look at where I am today. You know, I love plants and I love making these videos and it just brings me so much joy. So I'm very, I'm, it's weird how it worked out. Like I'm, I'm so happy I found plants, but I found them at a time where I really needed them, right? Like they found me because yeah, it was really stressful with my job. And this was just a fun hobby to get into that just kind of, I just went crazy with it. Oh my goodness, look at how stinking cute that is. I love it. So I have six plugs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I ended up doing two plugs in I think four of the milk confetti syngonium. And then I've lost several of the gigantium, so I don't have as many to do. But I like the two, like keeping them as a set of two. If you could choose any two of your plants to cross pollinate, what would they be if it's not possible? Even if it's not possible. Oh gosh, I feel like definitely a monstera. Maybe like a monstera, alba or aria, and then maybe crossing that with, I honestly don't know. I would say probably maybe like with an alocasia or something, like a variegated alocasia. <laughs> so, I don't know. I feel like that would be pretty cool. I honestly have no clue. Probably just like my two favorite plants, which would be a monstera and then my marble queen. I honestly, I would love to see what my marble queen with my monstera albo would be like if they were crossed into one. That would be pretty cool. I think probably those two. My most and least favorite plants from my collection. Obviously my most favorite is my Monsteras, like my Aria Albos, I love them. I could not have those plants. I could not not have those plants in my collection. They just mean so much to me. And my other favorite is my Marble Queen, my Epipremnum, just because it's beautiful and like some of my moss bowl plants are my favorite plants in my collection. I love epipremnum plants. I just think they're so easy going. Like my Cebu Blue and my Epi Marble are gonna be some of my favorite plants I can tell coming up once they start, like my, especially the Epi Marble once it starts getting bigger. And I love Alocasia too. I love the variegated fry deck, it's beautiful. I love my Capria. It's hard to really pick favorites. I just have so many. And I would say the least favorite is, I'm not, I, I have one begonia left, my Maculata, which I'm not really a begonia person. I'm not really um, a Peperomia person. And I would say probably, Probably those are my least favorite that I currently have in my collection. I wouldn't purchase any more of those plants like in my future. So if something happened to those ones, I would not like replace them or buy them again. Cause I just, I'm just not really a fan of them, I guess. Next question is, what is on the top of your plant tea wish list that you don't have already? Monstera Mint right now. They're coming down in price a little bit, but they're still very, very expensive. I talked myself out of like splurging and buying one because I'm like, no, I cannot spend that money on a plant right now, but I will have one one day. You can actually, I think, get the tissue culture, small little babies like these on Etsy, I think for around like two something. But even a small plant, I've seen them for like six, $700. I'm like, it's a little too, too much right now that I'm, really wanting to spend. I want the Monstera Flame too. That one is beautiful, but still 
kind of expensive. But I would say those would probably be my, my top plants that I would want right now. What plant did you end up loving way more than I expected? I would say definitely, I, I think I have to give it to my Marble Queen because you know, it's such a common plant and it's beautiful trailing. I still have my trailing basket where I started my pole plant from. And I just never, I just feel like I didn't expect to love it as much. It just, it's such a different plant climbing how big it is compared to how it is when they're small. They're just, you just can't compare the two plants together. Like the size is just unreal, I guess. And I just never thought that I would love a plant as much as I love that one. There's just something special about it. I don't know, I can't explain it. And it's such an easy plant. So easy going, not a pest magnet at all. Definitely one that I would recommend starting on a pole. I just think that, I don't know, I just think you can't beat it for the price and how common it is and how beautiful it is. Each new leaf is giving me such beautiful variegation and I adore it. <laughs> Next question, do you have any tips for preventing variegated plants from losing their variegation more and more? Love your videos. Thank you so much. I just feel like with variegated plants, it honestly, it just comes down to the genetics of the plant. And there's not really a way per se to keep the variegation to prevent it from like losing it. Obviously light is really important with variegated plants just because they do have less chlorophyll, so they really do need that light. I've had some plants where under higher light, it's helped bring it out more. That's probably the only thing I, I would really suggest besides if you do lose the variegation, just chopping it back on the vine on the stem where you, where you last see variegation and hopefully that node that reshoots, that growth that reshoots from a different node will come out variegated. I have had plants revert on me and they, like my Florida Beauty did not grow back variegated even after chopping. And then I've had plants like my, one of my pink princesses. I had propagated it prior and the growth that came from a different node grew all pink. And so I chopped it again last summer because I didn't want the all pink growth. Yeah, I would say just try to keep it in good light and hopefully, it'll continue to give you good growth. And it's, I always say it's best to buy a plant that has more variegation from the beginning, from the get-go. That way you can hopefully have that continue on each new leaf that comes out. So buying one that's more highly variegated, your chances will be higher. Someone asked if I sell plants and currently I do not just because the plants I have in my collection is just that. It's my collection that I've curated, that I've grown a lot of these from cuttings, and I just wanna grow them into big, beautiful plants, and I wanna see what they can become. I'm not really looking to sell plants right now. Maybe sometime in my future, I will like open up a, I really do wanna have my own website where I could possibly sell like cuttings or sell plants that I don't want or something like that or like baby corms or you know like my anthurium that I pollinated I planted the seeds so maybe I could sell some anthurium seedling babies once they grow but as of right now I'm not really I'm not really looking to sell anything right now just because I feel like I don't want the hassle of trying to like ship plants and run a business, a plant selling shop business with trying to do YouTube and stuff. I feel like it can be a lot of work and I'm not quite ready for that yet. So I definitely do want to try and sell some plants in the future, but right now I feel like I'm still kind of focusing on getting my plant collection how I want it and, you know, just focusing on still doing YouTube because I am trying to do this for work. So it has been challenging a little bit because I don't have another job right now. So 
I feel like that's kind of been my main focus and not, you know, selling plants, I guess. So one day, um, you know, whenever I do decide to, I will definitely, you know, let you guys know. You know, I meant to add some fertilizer in here and I completely forgot. You know, I'm not gonna add fertilizer to these little babies because this soil has fertilizer in it, you know, so I'll add some in the future. But right now I think I'm just gonna pot them up without fertilizer. So cute. Okay, my battery died and I went to change it and I turned the camera back on. I hit record, but I forgot to turn my mic back on. So I potted like the rest of them up and I answered like three or four more questions that it didn't answer. Uh, so let me see what I answered. I'll answer them real quick before we move on. I think the next question was about the Aeroid mix. They asked if I would do that instead of using moss and I do wanna try it. I think I wouldn't use it in a wire pole just because in my plant room, I feel like it would make a mess and it would just, the way that I water in there, I don't take them down. I water over the top and I leave them in their spots. I feel like the, um, mix would just like make a mess all over the carpet in there. But I do want to try it, I think, for a thick leaf hole and see how I like it compared to moss. So I'll have to remember to do that and try it out. But I do, definitely do want to. Another couple questions that I already answered that didn't record was um, the most difficult plant I've had to deal with. I actually did make a video on this. I shared my top five hardest plants. So I will link that up here if you have not seen it. I did feature a lot of philodendron in my collection. I, I featured my Gloriosum, my Varicosum, and Milanochrysum. I feel like those are definitely some more finicky phyllos or harder to care ones for me. You know, besides like there are a lot of picky plant genuses like Calathea and stuff. So I feel like though those have been probably like my hardest ones in my collection just to grow. I'm finally growing my Varicosum and Gloriosum back, but still not the happiest of plants. I feel like my Gloriosum still. And the Milano, I have a new one now that was imported and it's still a little bit finicky. So definitely one that I would say is, is pretty hard to grow in indoors. What is the process I follow when I first bring home a new plant? I'm not as like picky about it as I used to be. I used to be just crazy obsessed with making sure it didn't have pests. I would like put it in my bathroom, leave it in there for like a month. And I don't do that too much anymore now. If I'm getting a plant from the big box store, I will definitely like quarantine it. I'll put it usually in my kitchen here over by my window. I have a spot that I sit new plants because it's kind of isolated and you know, I can check for pests or at least leave it there for a couple weeks to make sure that nothing is going to spread. So I do inspect for pests. I usually water in BTI to kill any gnat larvae. I put a sticky trap in the soil and then I'll take my Castile soap and spray down the leaves front and back. And that's pretty much it. I don't repot it. Sometimes I don't repot plants for a long time. I have plants still in their growers mix from like way over a year ago. <laughs> so, um, but I'll eventually repot it. It depends on the plant and the substrate that it's into. So if I'm getting a new plant and it's in moss, I'll eventually pot it up after a couple weeks because I don't like to grow in moss. I definitely just inspect and kind of leave it in an area and then, um, yeah, just wipe the plant leaves down most of the time. So, but like my, my new order that I just got, um, they were shipped to me in moss and the leaves look fine. So I'm not going to like isolate those. I'll just... I feel like I would be fine to put those with the rest of my collection. All right, so we are going to be moving over to the variegated Gigantium next. We have all of our milk confettis here. I have five pots of these. I should be able to do these, I think, in four cups, just because we do have less. Next question. Wondering to add fertilizer to the water when I water my pole since slow release fertilizer is only in the pot. Thank you, love your channel. Thank you so much. I don't add fertilizer to the water just because when I water my poles, one of the waters reaches the soil. So the plant is still uptaking and using that fertilizer that's in the soil. 
And when I water the moss, it's just moistening the moss and the roots in the moss. Like I don't wanna add any additional fertilizer through there because I don't wanna risk over fertilizing. And they seem to be growing, I mean, just fine. I mean, the leaves are still sizing up and I don't really feel like switching from slow release just because it's easier for me. So I don't know if that'll change in my future if I will move away from slow release. I just, I've had a good experience with it and I like it so far. And you know, I've been using it a year now and yeah, but just for my moss poles, I don't add any extra just because I don't wanna accidentally over fertilize and cause leaf burn and everything. So yeah. Next question, how do I keep my prayer plants? thriving and not crispy. Mine are all such delicate babies. They are very difficult. I still get crisping on mine. I get crispy leaves and stuff all the time. I actually will cut yellow leaves off. If I have crispy parts, I usually just cut them off just to prune them and make them appear nicer. But I still get crispy leaves. Even in my, my environment, it's hard to, you can't really prevent it, it's just, it's just gonna happen regardless, no matter the environment. I mean, when you go to a greenhouse and you see Marianta and Kalithi and stuff, I mean, they still have crispy leaves and even in ideal conditions, it's just gonna happen. So I don't really expect them to look perfect all the time, but if a leaf bugs me and stuff, sometimes I even just cut it off if I feel like it's just gonna bother me. So there's nothing special that I do besides just it being more humid here and the type of water I use, I don't use. I try not to use tap water and that helps just because of the minerals and tap. But other than that, there's nothing really special that I do for them. How do I treat my plants for possible pests once I buy them? That kind of goes back to the other question I answered. I just check and treat per plant pest. It's mostly fungus gnats, which I use VTI for, and I'm actually gonna be using watering and nematodes to kill the larvae, and then I'll spray with a, with Castile soap. But any other plant, like if there's spider mites on it, I try to check in the store while I'm there, cause I don't want to buy a plant if, it, if I know it has pests already, just to avoid an outbreak. But if I do happen to find something like mealies or spider mites, I'll just usually treat per plant pest that I have. Um, I'll use like a miticide for spider mites and mealies I usually just spot, um, treat with alcohol, it, it kills them instantly. So but yeah, I try to avoid pests if I can. So I try to thoroughly look at the store before I buy it. What is the difference in your fertilizer and Super Thrive or what are the benefits of using both? Um, I mean, Super Thrive, I really only use it to help reduce repotting shock. It does have nutrients, but it's not gonna be like using an actual fertilizer. I just use it after repotting just to give the plant, I guess, a little boost. I'm not exactly sure what all the nutrients are in it. I'd have to look at the bottle, but, um, but yeah, I don't use that on a regular, just mostly for repotting. Sometimes I added in moss for propagations or like rehabs and stuff. Um, but other than that, that's really the only time that I use Super Thrive. And that's why I add the slow release fertilizer in the soil just to actually provide those necessary nutrients the plants need. This is so cute. It looks cute potted up. Next question was about the, I, I uh, was saying I may not, never go back to making more wire poles after using the thickly ones. And is it because of the ease or they just wanted me to basically explain my thoughts on that. Yeah, I feel like it's just because thickly poles are a lot easier to use and to make, it's like an instant pull. I just grab the plastic piece out, I fold it up, add the moss in, and it's just like, it takes like, I've done it so many times now, it takes like just a few minutes to build and you have your pull. The wire ones, they don't have that clear backing, which the clear backing does help them retain moisture and the wire ones tend to dry out faster. And the wire ones are just kind of big and bulky and 
Again, they're just a pain to make. Like knowing I have to make wire poles, I just, it makes me not want to make them because they are wire and then they kind of like hurt your hands when you're making them and then cutting the wire. And you can't make just one, because I've tried that before. You make one wire pole and the next time you need a wire pole, you dread it again. So if you're gonna make them, make the whole thing at once and it takes quite a bit of time to actually sit down and make them all. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I feel like the thickly ones are definitely, look how tiny the root system is on that one. I might have to use a smaller pot for that guy. Yeah, it just like, I don't know. It just, it just makes me not want to make them, I guess, just because they are work. <laughs> And the thickly ones I feel like are going to be just as steady and just as stable as the wire ones. I have, I'm gonna be making a fourth layer soon on one of them. So I'll probably have to add an extension on it at that point, like a stake to the back, I mean, at that point. I'm gonna separate this one and add in here. But definitely, I mean, don't, don't like try, don't like not try wire because I'm saying it. Definitely try it for yourself and see how you like it. You might like it and you may not mind making them. So just because I feel like it's a hassle doesn't mean that you still can't use and try it. And definitely do what you feel is best because not everyone likes the clear poles either and that's totally fine. I just think for me and Stuff, I just, I just find it so much easier having the clear ones versus the wire ones. So yeah, I mean, I love both. I mean, wire is definitely sturdy. I mean, they're not gonna come falling over basically as long as they're supported well and situated well in the pot. And the clear ones, I feel like six foot clear pole will, will be just as sturdy, you know, with a stake and being in a ceramic, so. Why not just use the clear ones? That's kind of what I'm thinking. They're just so much easier and yeah, just less hassle to make. Um, someone wanted to know about the plants outside of my home. Could I tell or show those plants and how I care for them? Yeah, I actually have a video on that as well. When I was putting all my like porch plants and plants outside on the patio. So I can link that video up here. It was kind of like a vlog style, but I took you to my um, patio area and I showed you like all the plants that I put out there. It goes into more details about like light and all of that too. Next question. I watch a lot of plant videos on YouTube, but you were one of my favorites. Thank you. I see some uh, YouTubers with plants in every nook and cranny of their home and sometimes I'm overwhelmed by the plants by just looking at their videos. How do you feel about plants taking over your home? I mean, if it were up to me, I would have plants everywhere. <laughs> my husband is the one that doesn't care for them all over my home. But I mean, I wouldn't have them like in every nook and cranny, I would say. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. I mean, to each their own, right? I mean, it's whatever you like. It's your home and you're gonna be living there. Uh, I like having a space for the plants, but one space, it outgrows the space very quickly. And I am gonna be, I mean, I do have plants kind of all over by my windows. I have plants here that you can't see. I have plants in other bedrooms, in the bathroom and outside. So I, I still feel like I have plants all over my home. They're just not in like the main living space, which is I think the main thing my husband wanted. He just didn't want plants everywhere because at the old house, they were literally everywhere. <laughs> and I would water in the kitchen and it would just drive him, I think, a little bit crazy having just plant stuff and dirt and everywhere, especially when I watered, which was like once a week or so, and it was just like constantly a mess in our home. So it's much better having them more contained, I would say, but I feel like plants are your home. If you love plants and it's what you love, then definitely like do what makes you happy and what you like. So, but I would definitely put plants all over if this was just like my house and it was just me. 
How do I collect rainwater? Do I have a barrel? Yes, there is a barrel. Um, my husband set it up. It is outside. I don't really want to show it, I, and I've said this on I've said this a, couple, a few times actually, just because I don't want to get comments on it saying, "Well, that's not how you're supposed to do it," and I just would rather not show it. It's just a rain barrel, and it's sitting under a gutter. The gutter runs off into the barrel, and that's really it. And I am filtering the water now as of the last couple of weeks with the fungal issues I was having with my alocasias. I'm just like, now I'm like being super paranoid. Like I don't want anything wrong with the rainwater that I'm using. So I am going to filter the water now and just as like an extra step. But the barrel is just that, it's just a barrel holding the rainwater that runs off from the gutter. So <laughs> there's nothing like, I don't have a special like fancy setup or anything like that. It works, I mean, it's just holding the water and collecting the water and I just go out there and empty it out into my jugs and that's it. Now I'm just dumping all the water into a filter and then using the water out of the filter because I just feel more comfortable now doing it like that, just in case there was something wrong with the water. I don't know. <laughs> it is coming off the gutter, so you know there could be some kind of issue with the water in there, I don't know. Next question is, how do I move props from a perlite prop box to soil? Yeah, if they're in like a, a pretty humid environment and you're adjusting them to soil from perlite, just with like any propagation, you just have to keep in mind that not all of them make it, no matter kind of what medium they were growing in. It's just kind of the name of the game when you propagate sometimes, you can't really control. I mean, you can do everything right, and I lose cuttings all the time. I usually wait until I have plenty of roots because you can expect some root loss, right? So if you have enough roots, it should hopefully help and ease the transition a little bit better. But again, like you can't really control what happens and some just aren't gonna make it. So you just have to keep that in mind. Coming from perlite, just, you know, just be mindful on how quickly the soil is drying out. You know, don't want, you don't want the soil sitting too wet all the time, but you don't want the soil to go completely dry and stuff. So just monitor um, how the soil is feeling and you know, you want to acclimate them slowly out of a less humid environment. I wouldn't do it just suddenly, especially if they're going from really humid to not so humid. These ones are a lot smaller. They're, uh, I put them in a tinier pot because they didn't really have an established root system yet. I don't know, honestly, I don't know how those are going to do. And we have one left that I think I will go ahead and pot up into this one. Next question is what I do Syngonium anthuriums and alocasias on a moss pole. I would do them on a moss pole except for alocasia because of the way they grow. I don't really think that they would need one, but I do have a syngonium on a moss pole and anthurium I don't, but they are. They do climb up in nature, so they would definitely um, do well on a moss pole. They said they live in a dry climate and it might help with humidity and it, it definitely would. Just keep in mind, they still will dry pretty quickly. Um, so you just have to keep up with the watering with the moss. But definitely, I feel like they would benefit from a pole. Do I have any spider plants? No, I do not. I just don't really care for them. Um, I mean, they're pretty, like the ones especially that have the ones with all the babies hanging down, but I don't think I would ever want one. When it comes to using peroxide to treat root rot, is there a recipe? I usually do one part hydrogen peroxide to three part water. This one actually has a little bit more of a root system. I'm gonna go with this bigger pot actually. Yeah, one part water to three parts no, <laughs> one part hydrogen peroxide to three part water and then I let it soak. But I honestly, I just kind of eyeball it and do my best with that. I don't really stick to a certain recipe, I guess, just as long as it soaks them. And you really don't even have to soak it. You can just like spritz hydrogen peroxide on the roots. You know, you don't even have to rinse it off, but I just like to soak it. Um, that's just what I tend to do. 
What was my first plant? I believe it was uh, my snake plant that is outside. Uh, I believe it's probably going on 12 years now. I remember getting it when we got our dog, which was over 12 years ago. So it was roughly, roughly around that time. And then I had a golden pothos for a while too, which I don't have that original one anymore. And, um, but yeah, I knew nothing about plants during that time. I was just like, I don't, I don't even remember buying them. That's the thing. I just know that I, I just knew that I had them. What do I think about Sundapsis pictus exotica on a pole? I've seen them on a pole and they are beautiful. I don't think the leaves necessarily size up like some other plants, but they do look beautiful climbing. I think I just prefer the look of them trailing because I have so many poles now, so I have to be very picky with what I decide to climb just because it is a lot of work sometimes to maintain. So I don't think I would ever do one on a pole, but they are very beautiful. Someone asked, am I growing a silver sword? I do have one. I grew it to be somewhat tall, like maybe a couple feet. Uh, and then it just all of a sudden yellowed for some reason. I'm not really sure what happened with it. And so I cut it all back. And so I'm regrowing it. And then I have two babies that I kept that are growing from a node, basically. I do actually need to pot those up. Maybe I will grab those to do because I am finished with these ones. And I have, I have several more questions left and I haven't even done like the personal questions yet. So I think maybe I will do so I think I will do this one and maybe grab those silver sword. And by the time that maybe I'll get through the questions when that's done and I won't have to do like any other big projects with this video. Uh, but these are all so cute. I have to water all these in yet, but I might go get my other ones to pot up before I water these in. How many more plant questions do we have? Um, I might go ahead and answer these last few plant questions and then we will get the other plants to do with the personal questions. I had a couple questions about thrips and how to get rid of them. I, I'll link my thrips video because I go into a lot more details about what I did in my process with thrips. There's not really an easy way per se to get rid of them because of the way that they, they grow inside of it or they lay eggs inside of the plant tissue. So you just have to stay on top of treatment and they can fly so they can spread very quickly around your plant collection if they're together. So it was just a lot of constant checking and treating. I cut off a lot of leaves. I use beneficials and yeah, it was, it was a lot of work, but definitely um, just keep at it, keep checking. I got rid of any that I saw right away and um, I just like anything that I saw on my plant leaves, I got rid of them immediately just so that I could reduce spread. But I will definitely link that video. Plants outside, any that can handle a full sun. Um, I mean, any plant that you, that you have grown inside and you want to transition it to growing outside, you definitely have to acclimate them because if not, they will burn. Even sometimes even going in the shade, they can still burn. So just do it slowly. I would, I put my plants outside and the ones that I put in sun, I put a couple snake plants and cacti. They did burn some, but um, I mean, they're not all in direct full sun, but they do get a good amount of sun when it's out. But yeah, they will definitely burn if you just like put them straight into full sun. You definitely want to do it slowly and increase the amount of light that they're getting. I wouldn't directly put them in full sun. How did I transfer my ficus outside? Again, same thing with that. I, I have it in the shade on my front porch, so it didn't get any direct sun on the leaves and it did fine with that. Just make sure that if it does get sun, that it's not more for like an hour or so at a time and then slowly increase that time. Cause I definitely didn't want it to burn. And it was my, and I didn't have that one outside last year. I had it outside the first year that I got it. So this is the year, this is my third year with it. So it's definitely growing um, now, finally. I do want to slowly acclimate it to more sun, I believe, because I feel like it would appreciate that. I felt like it was leaning a little bit. What are my slow growers? I feel like this depends on light levels in a way, because plants obviously that I don't keep in bright light, they don't grow as fast. 
But in general, I feel like some Hoya grow slow. Um, but my Hoya variegated compacta grew like, I don't know, four inches in like three years. <laughs> Slow growers. Other than that, I feel like, yeah, I think really it just, honestly, it depends on the plant and light levels and maybe other circumstances with it. Favorite plant genus is Monstera, hands down. I love Monstera. Can you explain the difference between a Gloriosum and a Glorious? So the Gloriosum is the one of the parents of the Glorious. The Glorious is a hybrid of the Gloriosum and the Melanochrysum. Uh, the Gloriosum is a crawler and the Glorious can climb. I have mine on a moss pole. They said they bought a Gloriosum and it wants to climb. I mean, if your Gloriosum wants to climb, let it climb. But normally they are a crawler and my Glorious definitely wants to climb. What are some common plants that most people have that you just can't be bothered with? <laughs> Probably just I guess ficus. I feel like a lot of people like ficus and I don't really care for them. I do have the, you know, the Teneki and the, I got it the new Shivriana one, but it's really tiny. Like the Lyrica, the ficus Lyrica. I just, I don't know, really want like a big tree like that growing in my house, I guess. I don't know. I mean, they're pretty and I did have one at one point, but I sold it before we moved here. I just don't think I, I just don't think I would ever like want one again or get one again, I guess. Not really a fan of like crotons, begonias, spider plants, peperomias, stuff like that. I wouldn't get any, any of those. I feel plants, I feel most plants of mine don't have a good root system. What could it be? I mean, it could be just something that they're unhappy with with the soil, depending on what substrate you use. It could be a watering issue or um, possibly a light humidity issue, like the growing environment and how, I guess how established they are. Cause sometimes when they're small, they just take a while to kind of develop a better root system and grow better. So I guess it's hard to say without really knowing more, I guess. Can I talk about runners and what to do with them? Uh, I, I cut them off, honestly, because I just don't really want a long vine going, like an empty node without any leaves. So if I have a runner, just because I like the more bushy look to plant, so if I have a runner, I just tend to just cut it back. I mean, you don't have to save every little node. You can just cut it off and it'll reshoot from the last node and hopefully it won't um, give you more runners, but some plants are just known to give you runners like my um, And it, sometimes it happens too, depending on light levels because they tend to kind of Grow a vine kind of stretching out for more light But even in I still get runners even in good light it happens. I think some plants are just prone to it and they're just looking for something to climb and grow their their aerial roots into so some plants that do that would prefer to climb. Um, so yeah, I just cut them off, but you can do whatever you want. You can just leave the vine how it is or, you know, propagate it. How important is pH? Do you test your soil, make amendments? So I did buy a soil testing kit. I don't think it was too accurate. I do test the pH of my water. I have a water testing kit. So my rainwater, so ideally pH should be, I think, slightly more on the acidic side. So around like a 5.5, 6.5. And then my tap water is more alkaline, like closer to an eight. And I never realized that. And my rainwater is more um, in that slightly more acidic zone, but still like in the ideal range. So I don't have to adjust my pH of the rainwater, but if I'm watering straight with tap water, it depends on how many plants I have to water with it. I don't always adjust it, but I do have like the pH down stuff, the drops that I add into my water. I mean, over time, your plants may not grow that well if they're getting more like one or the other, it's not ideal for them. So you can notice like, um, poor growth. Maybe they're just not, <laughs> she's hyper. Did you see her? What are you doing? Are you hyper? Huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so 
I would say pH is definitely important. And I mean, if you want like happy, healthy growing plants, I mean, if there's nothing wrong with the way that your plants are growing and if you don't really feel like the need to test, then, you know, by all means, definitely do what's best for you. I feel like it's not something to really worry about when you're getting into plants because I honestly didn't know anything about any of that when I first got into plants. And then it's not only until like, I didn't even test my pH until last year until I moved here. I was just, I was just actually curious what my pH levels and stuff were. And, um, you know, I, I would say it, it doesn't probably do like detrimental damage to your plants, but I feel like it can, um, like inhibit growth and stuff and uptake of nutrients over time. Someone was asking about flat mites. I do need to make that second video. I just haven't done it yet. Still, I keep, I keep putting it off. I'm gonna have to make that a priority to get done. They wanna know how transferable I believe they are. Uh, do I have to burn the room, <laughs> pots and all? <laughs> you know? That's what I honestly felt like doing. I felt like taking those plants and chucking them. Honestly, if they weren't some of my most loved plants, like my Maranta Calathea, I probably would have just chucked them because I was just so frustrated. I feel like if, plant, if the plant leaves are next to each other, then definitely, and you touching them, like I am such a huge leaf petter. So like by you touching plant leaves and then touching the next plant leaves, you can easily transfer them. They mostly affected my Maranta Calathea and I only had one Hoya. And I honestly, I didn't go around scanning all of my plants. I did a few here and there, but it just got to be too much. And I'm just like, you know what? I'll check plants on occasion. If I feel like a plant isn't growing or it seems unhappy or I notice like weird markings, I'll check, but I'm definitely not gonna drive myself crazy. Um, I don't think they would, I think they would be mostly pertain to the plant leaves and stuff. I don't think they would be on surrounding objects or cats. <laughs> Do they take to the walls curtains, cats? <laughs> I don't think my cats are spreading them around. But yeah, definitely like don't don't drive yourself crazy, you know, just do the best you can. I didn't spray my entire collection down. I didn't, it was just too much work. Definitely do what's best for you and your own peace of mind because only you know that. So if you're, if it's best for you to take them all down and spray them and treat them, then definitely do what's best for you, but don't. I just feel like they're not, your plants aren't going to die. Like. I feel like some plants may go dormant from stress, like some of my Calathea went dormant due to the stress, but they'll grow back in some time. Definitely, like if a plant is happy and it's growing, don't like stress, it'll be okay. Just stay consistent with like spraying your plants down. Even with water and hosing them off is better than just not doing anything. You don't have to go crazy and I don't really recommend sulfur. It's just very harsh. Um, so yeah, definitely just don't, don't drive yourself crazy. <laughs> I think there's a few more plant questions left and then we are going to move on to the personal ones. Can I do a tour of my repotting cart with everything that you, that I have in it? Yes. I do want to show you guys. I meant to do that in like a plant chores and I completely forgot. So I'll have to remember to do that for you guys soon. You don't really do plant shopping videos anymore. I like to see them so I see what's new. I still do them. I probably do them, it's probably more like once a month now, just because I feel like, I mean, I still like filming them and doing them. It's nice to go out and browse big box stores. I just feel like, you know, there's so many big box plant shopping videos and stuff out. And I feel like I'm kind of burnt out with the big box stores in a way, just because I feel like it's the same stuff over and over again. And I don't know. I don't like filming them as much as I used to, but I still like doing them. I still enjoy going out and filming those videos. I feel like here in Savannah, there's not that many like plant places, I guess. So I'm kind of limited on where I can go, but I do like filming them and um, showing you guys what's new. So I'm still doing them. How do I keep my pink princess from burning under grow lights? Even when I think mine is far enough, my leaves have been getting a little burnt with variegation is better than ever. So I'm not sure what the sweet spot is. Um, my pink princess hasn't really ever burned under a grow light. I don't keep, it's probably like a good eight to 10 inches away, I would say. And the, I think the discoloring that you might be 
seeing on yours is probably just bruising from when the leaf is damaged and the um, like caterpillar it went, went before it unfurls all the way. It tends to get stuck and sometimes that can damage the leaf before it fully unfurls and that and it hardens off because I've had that happen to mine. It happens more on leaves that get stuck that cause the damage. So I think that's what you might be referring to. But even, I mean, I've had my pink princess like within six inches of my grow light and it's been fine. Do I have any tips and tricks for Calathea? Every time I get one, it dies sooner or later. It may have just shocked and gone dormant. Just because they lose their leaves does not mean that they are dead. They can grow back from their rhizomes that are in the soil. They're like the potato things. So just give them some time. They really need to adjust to your space. And once they're happy, they'll start pushing new leaves again. Make sure they don't have any kind of pest because they stress very easily. I try not to repot new plants right away as well, just to give them time to fully adjust to your space. And I mean, humidity keeps them happy. They don't like cold temperatures and make sure that they're getting light. And I use rainwater for mine. Some Calatheas are more finicky and can be a little bit more stubborn to grow. So it really depends on the one. I, I, there are easier Calatheas, but they just really, I just feel like, they take a lot of patience sometimes. <laughs> All right, last plant question is about the, about alocasia buying from a big box store. All the leaves died from a fungal infection. Is there a chance the plant itself will regrow? Yes. Um, my stump, I actually didn't keep because my alocasia azelani I got from the big box store had a fungal infection. And I took enough corms off and grew um, all the corms out that I just didn't keep the original stump. I was just worried the infection would continue, even though it was probably fine. I just got rid of it. I didn't feel like messing with it or taking a chance on it. Um, it will regrow in some time. I would definitely, if you wanna keep watering it, what you could do actually is, I highly suggest moving it to a stratum, a fluval stratum. Just the overall like nutrient factor of stratum and everything with it, they're really going to be encouraged to grow better. So if you can get your hands on some stratum, I would definitely highly suggest using that for alocasias. You can't grow in it long term, but to grow enough of a root system back and to keep them happy until you can transfer them back, then, you know, I definitely recommend it. My variegated fry deck went dormant and um, I moved it to, from soil to stratum and it's growing in nicely now. And it has two leaves and it's working on a third one. So definitely, um, Dormant alocasias, I highly recommend stratum to start them back. All right, I'm gonna grab a couple more plants to do, give these a water in, and then I'm gonna move these off, and then we will get started with the personal questions. It's starting to thunder and get darker now. I can hear the thunder rolling in. <laughs> All right, I grabbed a couple more plants. So I showed you the pink princess. I'm just gonna go ahead and move it from stratum. I'm gonna pot it into this clear pot here and we're gonna do um, my chunky soil mix. So this should be pretty quick and easy. And then I'm gonna build a small grow pole. I already have some moist and moss from the other day when I was potting up all my anthurium babies. And I do this so many times, I feel like it would be pretty easy to do. And I'm gonna use this four inch pot for it. And these are my two little baby silver swords that I have in my Ikea cabinet. They're in stratum as well. I'm gonna do these together on the small grow pole and have them grow up because they definitely need some support. They've been like growing like this for a while. So that is the other two little plant projects we will do here. I'm gonna do the pink princess first so I can get this chunky soil mix moved out of the way because for the moss pole, we'll do our moss pole mix. All right, personal questions. Apart from plant care, do I have any other hobbies or interests that I like to do in my free time? Love all of your videos. Thank you so much. And I feel like plant care does take a lot of my time and I do enjoy it because it started out as a hobby for me and it's still a hobby as much as it is like what I'm doing for work right now. 
I do love, um, my husband and I love doing activities outside, whether it be just even going for a walk or just getting out of the house doing some kind of exercise. We used to do more hiking, but we haven't really done much hiking here. I feel like we haven't really just looked for anything to do as far as trails and stuff here. And then I want to get back into like doing painting and stuff. I used to paint when I was younger and I really enjoyed it. So maybe one year I will get into that. I don't really watch a lot of TV. I don't really read a lot. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I spend a lot of my free time like editing content and making content and doing plant care, which I love, like I said, but yeah, I don't know. And I'm not really one to go out a whole lot. So I mostly like to stay at home. I guess I'm definitely an introvert, you could call it. And I mean, I do like to like hang out with people and do things, but I, it's nice to go out of the house and do stuff with people every once in a while, which I do, but I, I am definitely a homebody and I like to be at home. It's where I'm happiest. <laughs> What things have surprised you about being a planty YouTuber? What things have surprised me? I would say not necessarily with being a planty YouTuber. I guess just like being on social media in general. Look at the roots on, on that in stratum. It's crazy. Can you see it? <laughs> I would say just overall, I feel like, you know, I would say a good 99% of people, you know, like you and love you and want you to do well and are happy for you. And I'm so thankful for you guys and from watching my videos and just supporting me and being here. Like, I appreciate you so much. And you're not going to have everyone that likes you. And I think that's the thing that probably surprised me the most is, you know, no one expects... I don't know, people can just be so mean sometimes behind the computer and just the things that they say sometimes, you know, trying to put you down and make you feel bad is probably, like I, I remember getting my first couple of hate comments and I didn't really understand it or where they were coming from. Like, it's just like so easy to just keep scrolling, you know, you don't have to and put your opinion and just say something mean to people. I don't know. I just don't get that because I feel like I would never ever do that to someone. I wouldn't like purposely say hateful things to them and just be mean, so I don't know. I think that's just probably my biggest thing with just social media in general. But I mean, about being a plant YouTuber, I guess just the fact that I am I don't know, like I have people that watch my videos, which is so crazy to me. I just, cause I watched YouTube back in the day when I was getting into houseplants and it helped me so much. And I remember thinking like, oh, that would be so cool to be able to make YouTube videos about plants. Like I, that would be a dream. I would love that. And for me to like be here making videos about plants, I just, I don't know, I just, Sometimes I don't really feel like, is this what I'm really doing right now? It doesn't seem real. It's hard putting yourself out there sometimes, but you just have to learn to look past that. And you know, you have to like what you're, what you're doing. And I love making videos and it's definitely, I mean, it's not easy, but the more you do it, the better you get at it and the more that you learn. And I'm just really thankful and glad to be here. And I just appreciate all of you so much. What does my husband think of my collection and does he have any favorites out of them? He will probably say his favorite is the one with the green leaf. <laughs> uh, I don't think he really has a favorite, honestly. He's not like, I asked him one time before and he said, he pointed to that leaf, that plant, which was my alocasia capria. I just think it was one that stood out to him when I had my plant shelf on the other wall <laughs> when he walked in there that one time. But um, I mean, he doesn't mind the plants. He, at the old house, when I was saying earlier, they were kind of all over the place. So, and the mess in the kitchen, I think is what drove him crazy. 
because uh, I didn't really have a, a different place to water plants, I guess, and I just took over the kitchen a lot. So there would be plant stuff everywhere, and I think it just got kind of annoying a little bit. And just like overall, it kind of took over the living space. So he's much better and happier, and I'm much better and happier having them in a more like located place other than being so spread out. And I do have them by windows, of course, in other areas of my home, but I guess it's nice. I mean, he knows I do this for a job right now, so he is very supportive in that sense, but he could probably do without having them like all over the house like I would want. Like he wouldn't want them all over. If I had a choice, I would have plants all over the place. <laughs> all right, that one is very cute, potted back up. I ended up using a smaller pot just so it wouldn't overwhelm the root system because it was still very small. This was another tissue culture plant that was sent to me. It was gifted to me from that Etsy um, seller in the root system was so little when I got it, it ended up rotting. So that's why I had to re-root it in stratum. Tell us something unexpected or outside of the box about you. An odd quirk, favorite cocktail, embarrassing story, biggest fear. <laughs> um, an odd quirk. I guess like I'm just a clean person. Like I, I'm like, oh, I feel like nursing has brought out the germaphobe in me. I'm constantly cleaning all the time and things have to be somewhat in their place. I don't know, I guess it kind of drives me crazy sometimes too because like my, my plant room the other day, like it was totally fine. I did not have to go crazy in there and just rearrange and do a bunch of stuff, but I did because something was bugging me about there being dirt and moss on my moss pole shelves and I just went crazy in there. I don't know. And owning a St. Bernard too for almost 12 years, just the hair and the slobber, I just had to clean all the time and I think that's what prompted me to be the way that I am as well. I mean, we have three cats now, but they're, they're not as messy as dogs. So yeah, I was cleaning a lot with him. I don't know if I have a favorite cocktail, I guess. I mostly, I feel like the cocktails I do drink, it's either tequila or vodka, something with vodka. I don't really like too sweet of drinks and I drink red wine a lot. Not a lot, but when I have wine, I do drink red wine. I mean, I, I love a, like a classic, you know, margarita. I love like mojitos and Moscow mules. And yeah, I'm not like too picky, I guess. I can pretty much drink and try and eat like anything. I'm not a picky eater. Hi, Nanoon. Hi. Where you been at my love? Hi. So yeah, I love, I mean, as long as it's not super sweet, I, I will love it. Biggest fear is I'm afraid of the open water and spiders. Spiders, hands down, I cannot deal with spiders. The tiniest of spiders, I will go running in the other direction. If there's a spider in the house, I have to get my husband. So when we first moved in here, there was a crack in our front door and spiders kept coming in. So one day he was out of town um, and a huge spider was on the middle of our floor. So I took a, a book and slammed it on the spider and I couldn't move the book. My husband literally had to move the book. And I've trapped spiders before. I, I will sit like a plastic food container over the bug <laughs> and it'll be stuck in there until my husband will come remove it because yeah, it's not, it's not going anywhere with, with me doing it. I can't. I just can't with spiders. <laughs> I don't know if I have like an um, um, like a embarrassing story. I don't know, I've had like nursing. I mean, nursing. I did nursing for ten years, so I mean, we have like funny nursing stories. But I don't know. I can't. I can't. I feel like I'm always embarrassing myself. <laughs> All right, we are gonna start with our thickly pull. I am done with my regular soil mix, so I'm going to move this, bring in my moss pole mix. I had just made this earlier too. Don't ask me why I have a, it's a spatula in here because I have no idea. <laughs> I love the uh, smell of fresh soil. It smells so good. Maybe I'm just weird. 
my camera keeps overheating, so I'm like, let me try and finish this up here. <laughs> what are your cat's names, age, personality, and how did you get them? So the two siblings, the black and white tuxedo cats, uh, the boy is Chai and the female is Star, named after Starbucks chai tea latte because my husband loves those drinks. Um, we got them first. They were We adopted them at six months old. So these are our second set of cats. We Is this two poles together or just one? This feels pretty thick. We adopted them at six months. And so we had cats before these two actually. One lived to be seven, the other one lived to be 14. And about eight weeks went by after the 14 year old passed and I missed having cats. So I ended up finding these two. Um, and I was just in there just browsing and <laughs> my husband, I texted my husband, I'm like, there's two kittens that I really think we should adopt. They're siblings. That would be perfect. Cause I knew like if I did get another cat, like I didn't want to get just one, you know, I had to get two. And so we ended up adopt adopting them and they were the cutest, tiniest little babies. They were so, so cute. They're four now. Um, and then my husband actually um, saw Luna and he mentioned her to me. This was like a year later, probably, I think. Yeah, it was about a year later. And because she's a year younger than these two and she was, I think about five or six months when we adopted her too. Maybe four months actually. She was a, a little bit younger when we adopted her. She was actually up for adoption by someone else had like planned on adopting her. And so they told us that and we were like, oh no. And we're like, okay, well, if it doesn't work out, let us know. And they called us the next day and said that the other couple that were going to adopt her changed their minds. And they asked if we still wanted her. And we were like, yes, of course. She was the cutest little kitten. She was a little maniac. That's where I got Luna from because she was a lunatic. <laughs> and I like the name Luna, but she was a crazy kitten. I still remember going in there and just seeing her just being a hyper chaotic kitten. I don't know where she got that energy from, but she is my little baby and I love her. And Star is my husband's cat. She loves him. And then Chai loves both of us. They're all such good cats. We honestly were just so lucky with them and I love them all. So she will be four this year and they will be five. So she's three and four. <laughs> Someone asked about fellow RN here, what was your specialty when you worked the floor? I did cardiology is where I got started on. It was like my main um, floor that I worked on. And then it slowly got to be just, we got all kinds of patients on our floor, all kinds of different areas, especially when COVID hit it just turned into any and everything. Our patients got a lot sicker, our workload got a lot heavier, and it was a lot, it honestly, it burned me out and I got really, really just, I had to take a mental break, it was just too much. I would come to work not knowing where I was working, I would be working in areas that I never stepped foot in before, I didn't know anyone, the patient load, like I had worked with patients I didn't work with before. And I just felt like unsafe and I was just really stressed and I just had to, I just had to take a break. And you know, my plan, I, I was planning on finding a nursing job here and start working as a nurse, um, you know, after we moved, cause I had quit before our move here to Savannah cause it kept getting delayed. And so I was off work for a while and you know, when I started a YouTube channel and started trying to do YouTube and stuff and social media, I wasn't expecting to, I was like hoping to, to make this work. And I still am, you know, I'm still trying to make this work, but I definitely, since I'm being out of work this long, like being out of the hospital and knowing that I, I can't go back to working as a nurse anymore, I just feel like it's not for me. I don't know. I didn't like the way that I was feeling and just being, feeling that way every day. I just couldn't, I just couldn't handle it anymore. So 
I'm definitely much happier. I miss it, of course, some days, but I'm definitely happier not being in that setting, I guess. But I do miss it some days. Did you go to college? If so, what did you major in? So yes, I went to nursing school. I have an RN. How did you get comfortable filming and get into a good routine routine when you first started YouTube? So when I first started YouTube, I was so nervous. I remember my first video. I even, so I started filming. I filmed with my phone for like the first six months. And the first video I filmed, it was repotting my Monstera Thai constellation. I had the phone flip the wrong way. So it wasn't even landscape view. I was nervous, but I pushed myself to do it because I actually wanted to start a beauty channel back in the day. And I taught myself out of it and I never started it and I regretted that and I wished I would have started because who knows where that could have led now, you know? there's I feel like beauty influencers and stuff do really well for themselves, so who knows? I kind of like regret not doing that. Uh, so I may still start a YouTube channel, I just, I am a very shy person. It was very hard. I had to, it took a lot of convincing for myself to do it. And I watched a lot of YouTube back in the day and I'm just like, Melissa, you just gotta do it. You just gotta start cause you know, you don't know, you don't know what will happen. So just do it. You know, you wanna, you know, you wanted to start a channel. And so once I started, I committed to um, doing two videos a week. I never missed a upload. I made myself post on schedule. I don't, I don't remember what the schedule was, but I did, I think it was like Tuesday or Monday or Thursday uploads, but I did that consistently, the two videos a week for almost a year. And I got kind of stressed sticking to an upload schedule because if something wasn't ready, then I felt bad that something wasn't ready on that day. And I didn't want to like rush videos if they weren't ready, I guess, and it really stressed me out. It, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't miss an upload day, you know. So, not having an upload schedule definitely helped after some time. But I would say getting an upload schedule or starting an upload schedule keeps you kind of motivated to. It just like sets the bar for you to stay consistent with it because like, you know, okay, these are your two upload days. You have to have a video on these days. Just stay consistent with it for as long as you can. And, you know, hopefully your channel will grow and, you know, your audience will find you and, um, you know, you'll gain a following. And at that time, I don't think YouTube shorts really came out yet. Um, so I didn't do, I didn't start YouTube shorts for a while and I still really even don't do a lot of shorts. I don't even post half of my like Instagram content to YouTube, like my short, short form videos. It's just a lot of like platforms and a lot of uploading and everything to all the different sites. So it gets to be a lot some days, but um, I feel like shorts are definitely or where you get most of a following from. I feel like people aren't necessarily watching long form videos as much nowadays. And it, I feel like with TikTok and everything, people are just so used to just swiping and swiping and watching all these short form videos that it's hard to grow just doing long form videos. It really is. But I still enjoy long form videos. And it's nice to put a video on or something while you're getting ready or, um, doing plant care and plant chores. It's nice to have a video and You know have something on while you're oop that new leaf just broke off But yes, I'm getting kind of off topic after I moved here and I um, Invested in a camera and then it was like a whole new learning experience again trying to film on an actual camera and learning how to edit on like an actual editing software and I'm still learning every day. It's definitely, there's a huge learning curve to it. And you know, you, you continue, for me, I always want to continue to try to improve and get better. Um, so that's my goal anyway, to try and always improve and get better with my video content. What is my favorite place to eat here in Savannah? You know, I'm still learning restaurants. I haven't been downtown a whole lot. Our neighbors that we hang out with a lot, we um, 
I've been to several places with them, like downtown. Uh, my husband and I really have been going to a taco place called Del Sur a lot. It's in Pooler, and it's really good. Tacos and the atmosphere is nice. In Richmond Hill, there's a fish tails restaurant that's kind of on the um, water, which um, it's kind of like a nice scenic place to eat in a way. It just kind of takes you out of, takes you out on the water, I guess, a little bit, like a different kind of view. I'm trying to think of the one that we went to. We've been to several downtown, but now I can't think of the names of them that were really good. I can't remember now. I'm trying to add my cutting in here, how I normally do with my moss poles. Why did you stop your career as a nurse? I kind of talked about that already. Just the pandemic stress. I just, I just needed a break. Um, what job does my hubby do? He, right now, he, he's been doing whole mortgage loan stuff for a while. And it's been kind of slow lately with, you know, the, how, how the economy is. So it's been kind of a struggle. Um, he's working from home with that job, but it's definitely, um, hasn't been easy. He's been applying actually to try and get a different job somewhere, but it's been rough. I think he's probably applied to like 60 jobs and yeah, it's been, it's been a little rough on his part. Um, he's definitely gotten like slowed down with work. So yeah, definitely. But he does want to find something else. And then, um, are we both originally from the South? So he is, he's originally from North Carolina. Um, he grew up in a smaller town in North Carolina and then he went to NC State. And so he's lived in like the triangle area of North Carolina until we moved here last year. And I'm originally from Ohio and I lived there for the first 18 years. And then I moved um, to North Carolina when me and my husband met. So I've been in North Carolina for the past like 18 years. And now, now we're both living in Savannah. But we love it here so far. Um, I, I do miss some aspects of living in like the Raleigh area. I feel like the greenhouses and stuff, like the plant shops were a little bit better there. So um, I haven't really found a place that I really like here in Savannah yet. Uh, maybe I should just start my own plant shop somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, we love the atmosphere and everything here. We love our house. Our house is seriously the best. We're just so happy here. We love our neighbors. We got very lucky to have such great neighbors. They have five cats. Four of them are Maine Coons and they are big cats and I love them all. What music do I like? I got that a couple of times. As far as music goes, I feel like I pretty much listen to anything that's on the radio. Um, I don't listen to too much like country, but I, I don't like not like it. Uh, I mean, I've listened to like 80s. Not, I grew up listening to like the 90s, I guess you call 90s, early 2000s. Um, I don't know anything that's really on the radio. I guess top 40, you could call it. I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of music now, which is kind of weird. Um, or TV. I don't really watch TV. I just like, I don't know. I just like the silence, I guess. It's more relaxing to me because I feel like with social media, I'm always like on my phone, like reels, there's music everywhere and like YouTube and finding music for YouTube that I kind of get burnt out with it in a, in a sense. So like when I'm at home or it's quiet, I'd rather it just be quiet in a way. Or listening to the thunderstorm that keeps creeping closer. <laughs> I just like listening to the sound of the rain and stuff. Do I watch any other plant YouTubers? I used to. Um, when I first got started with plants, I used to watch, like that's pretty much all I did. Like I was saying, like on my way to work and from work, I would plug in, I would mostly plug in a plant topic or a plant that I wanted to learn about. And I would just watch video after video after video after video. And I don't know, I loved it. Um, I watched um, Harley G, I watched Wild Fern, I watched, who else did I watch? I don't know, just I feel like any and every video, I, I just watched a lot of YouTube back in my day. Now I don't really watch as many other channels just because I feel like 
my own videos take up so much time. And sometimes if, I'm, if I've edited a video, I will play it back on my phone um, before I actually make it live to make sure like everything looks good and I'll watch it before I post it. So I'm like always watching my own videos back if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard when you're like doing YouTube, sometimes I have to take a break from it because I, again, it's like one of those things that I don't want to get burnt out with it. And I'll, if I'm searching for a topic, like I've been learning about pawn or trying to learn about pawn a substrate. So I just type in pawn and just pull up the first whatever videos come up and I'll just watch it. That's the thing too, like when you watch yourself back, it's like you're always constantly judging yourself and <laughs> it, uh, yeah, and that's how you learn like little quirks about yourself and things that you say all the time. So you can be like your worst critic, I guess. This is so cute. Oh my goodness. Look, that is so stinking cute. I wasn't planning on doing this one today. I wasn't planning on doing it on a poll, but here we are. We, we did this one and we have it on a poll. <laughs> Any, and I forgot to answer this one on the plant section. Any advice on keeping cats away from plants? And other than just kind of keeping them up high and keeping them away from your plants, I have my boy cat, Chai, is the only one that really gets nosy and wants to get into the plants. So I just, I block them out of my plant room now. Just I would just keep things up high. You can try getting like cat grass or, you know, just like distracting them, having toys, keeping them um, away from your plants. You can try like sprays to kind of deter them from your plants. You can use, I think, foil on top of your plants and stuff like that to try and keep them out. But I don't know. I've been pretty lucky with our three cats. I haven't really had to. Thankfully, they haven't really gotten into them that much. And my, my two female cats, they don't bother my plants at all. It's just the boy that I have to watch out for. All right, guys, I think that's all the questions. If I missed some, I'm sorry. I really tried to get to them all, but I really appreciate all of you for sending those in and thank you so much just for being here and for watching and supporting. I appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys again so much and I will talk to you later.